Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to CFL Central. CFL content for the fans, by the fans. And I have a very, very exciting video to bring to you guys. And that is because my hometown, my beloved Winnipeg Blue Bombers, are going to the Grey Cup for the fourth straight year. For the first time, yeah, he goes, he's good, bro, he's got the Grey Cup jersey. He's got the Grey Cup jersey. The Bombers are now the first team since the Eskimos dynasty in the late 70s and early 80s to make it to the Grey Cup on four consecutive occasions. I did check that. Uh, the Sam Peters did get three in a row, did not get four in a row. That Eskimo squad went to the final six times in a row and won five of them in a row. And so... You know, Bombers haven't exactly done that. However, very, very much a, a massive accomplishment. And and I got to say, I was worried about this game. I really was because BC is a damn good team. And that's something that I think I want to make very, very clear uh, is that, you know, obviously BC is disappointed. I mean, we've now beat them two straight years in the West final. Um, so, I mean, if I were in their shoes, I'd be pretty pissed too. Uh, however, it's one of those things where there are still many, many good pieces in BC. And I still think that the future is bright in British Columbia. Uh, that is, that is my true, truthful and honest opinion, but I'm very happy for my Winnipeg blue bombers from all you saw this game. What did you think, Rick? Um, just make note that I found this that I sent you. Yes. BC is now the oldest team currently in the in the twentieth century to be the oldest team to make it to the Great Cup. So you're talking about the, the longest like Great Cup the longest Cup, Great appearance Cup appearance drought. Drought, or Great Cup appearance drought. Is now well, it was Montreal. But now and now it's BC yes. in twenty eleven. Yes, BC in twenty eleven, because I believe the Alouettes were in twenty ten, right? It had uh, before yeah, this year. Had BC of one it would have been then Saskatchewan in 13. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, no, it's it's one of those things where I... Um, so there's a lot that happens in this game. Uh, I, I will say, if you're a neutral fan, so anyone, pretty much anyone who's a fan of, well, what the was the, of the, <laughs> uh, of the four teams left, um, th this, game this game was a lot, uh, was not as much... Uh, it wasn't as much flash and fizzazz as the uh, East final. However, uh, I got to say, and, and, and trust me, uh, if you guys checked out our video on that, it should be out before this one. Uh, it, it, it there's, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about. And, a uh, lot that we predicted. A lot that we predict. I I'm gonna piss some people off, but I I, I don't care. I, I I stand by everything. Um, I, of course I stand by the fact that I was right. Um, however, again, with this game, uh, so firstly, um, well, I think a good, a good, uh, way to kind of structure this a bit is to talk about uh, a little bit about our preview that we did of this game. If you guys haven't checked that preview out, honestly, I'd suggest doing so. It'll give you kind of a lot of context for this video. Um, and one of the things that we were talking about is like, okay, what are BC's key to success? One of them was stopping the running game of the Bombers, being able to shut down Oliveira or at least mitigate the damage he could cause. Um, nope. <laughs> Didn't work. And, Did and not work. The entire first drive that ended with a touchdown, cherry on top touchdown, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers was all Brady Oliveira. And I don't just mean all the rushing yards. I mean all the passing yards, too. Brady Oliveira... Like, I have to imagine that this was the most boring huddle. Every time, like, bombers go into huddle. It's like, all right, Brady, you're getting the ball. Next huddle. Brady, you're getting the ball. Next huddle. Brady, you're getting the ball, but you're going to run this way instead of that way. Next huddle. All right, Brady, we're going to throw it, but we're going to throw it to you this time. All right, Brady, you're getting the ball. Like, literally, that has to be the huddle, like, every time. Like, I'm not, but but it's one of those things. Can you, can you blame him? It was working. It was. Now, the Lions would eventually figure him out. Uh, however, at that point, the damage was done. As, I mean, the Bombers were really doing, when it came to their damage on offense, they were doing all that damage 
in majority of the first drive and even just in the first uh, first quarter um, uh, per se, more so. And so it's one of those things where even though BC was able to mitigate the damage of Brady Oliveira as the game went on, the fact that he had caused so much damage at the start, BC could never really catch up to that. And that was kind of the issue. Um, Sergio Castillo had an okay game. Ah, it's, I'm not going to lie. Sergio Castillo had a little bit of a rough game. Uh, he had a, he had a rough start, missed, uh, missed a long one that he would sometimes have, uh, but he missed it by a decent margin. Uh, there was kind of a bad one that was only 34 yards out that I th- they think he definitely wanted back. However, the good news for Sergio Castillo is that at near the end of the game, he did make he did make a, a kick or two that that were um, that were that were notable kicks. Like there was one there was one that was like 35 yards out or whatever. So good to see him finally you know kind of calm down once that comes in. So I'm hoping that that calm down state he had late in the game he brings. Um, into the uh, the Grey Cup this next week, so um, wh- like, what what do you have of note there, Rick? So a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Um, as if you go and watch the preview, I did mention that the only thing, the only big thing between the two teams that was the big de- decider was Brady Oliveira. Then I asked Carter the big question: Was Houston gonna get an interception? We both, I predicted yes, and he said Holmes, and Holmes got an interception. And that is the funny thing, is that the Bombers got got two picks tonight, and it was Demario Houston and Evan Holm. You predicted Houston, I predicted Holm. And those are the two guys that got him. Um, but it was yeah. one of those things, this was a huge game as well for Demario Houston. As Demario Houston, I mean... Um, he he started this season absolutely flying. He was phenomenal for the Bombers uh, near the end of the season, really uh, establishing themselves earlier in the, uh, early in the year in this league. Um, and so for him to be able, uh, but then he kind of then he kind of faded into the background for a bit. He dealt with some injury stuff, but being able to really make that presence known when it was most important, um, being able to. Uh, to play in clutch in that regard was really, really important for Demario Houston. So be, having him back was huge, especially when you're playing against a team with a very, very deep uh, throwing core as the BC Lions. As I mean, the Bombers really didn't have that much, that much throwing yards today. They really didn't. And um, and it was, it was one of those things because the Bombers tonight, even though their offense is very, very deadly, they did the most damage tonight with their defense uh, as the bombers would record nine sacks tonight. Jackson, Jeff code had three. Uh, there are some sources saying he has two and uh, it'll say that Jefferson has two. Uh, that is because one of the tackle, uh, one of the sacks is a joint sack. Uh, I personally would have given that to Jackson, Jeff code. I think uh, he was kind of a, a big role in it. However, regardless, even though Willie Jefferson only had one sack tonight, uh, he had tipped about two or three balls tonight. He he was getting his hands on it, he, even whether whether he was getting his hands on uh, Vernon Adams Jr. or not. He was getting that, those hands on the ball, and he was able to tip some, uh, which caused uh, which caused that Demario Houston interception was a Willie Jefferson tip. Um, and so it's one of those things where e- even if you're not able to necessarily get the sack. Sometimes you're able to do just as much damage, even more so sometimes from a tip, as if you're able to get a um, a pick out of that. Um, but I mean, one one thing that I will notice. Yes. Um. So, two things. Well, technically three. Yep. Um. Outside Mc McInnes, Whitehead, and Hollins, they had no receivers. So that was pretty much where where it was yeah. going. I mean, if you want to be technical outside of Lawler and Dembski, you guys had no one. That's true. Because if you look at the stats, there was Oliveira's running touchdown, BC's touchdown, your guys' block return for a touchdown, and then it was just basically a kicking game. Now, here's the question. Oh, snooze fest. Here's the question. Uh, <laughs> W regardless, 
W regardless. <laughs> Anyways, but um, now one thing I, I am curious about. So how, I want you to tell me, though, how many receiving yards, receiving yards did Brady yeah. Oliveira get and how many, how many uh, receptions? He had 15 receiving yards mm-hmm. and 109 rushing yards. But how many, how many like actual catches did he make? 15 on how many uh, catches? Oh, no. So he made two receptions on three targets. Gotcha. And he had 21 carries. Uh, oh, okay. So he had two receptions, got 15 yards. For, 15 uh, yards. So that's not bad. And then, 21, that's, that's, and then that's, 21 carries got him 101 or 109 with. Yeah, no, I was just trying to figure out his, his passing average. You know what I mean? He got, he got seven, he got seven and a half yards. So not bad. Just one of those things where, I mean, you're not going to be using your running back as like your, your number one receiver for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, I know that's how uh, I felt about this game too. Huh. Yeah. No, it's, it's, <laughs> It's because it's 2 a.m., Rick, and I know me saying that, you're going to be like, oh, it's 3 a.m. over here, and it's like... Actually, off. no, I'm 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 actually too wound up with the uh, other game that we'll discuss later. You're too... Uh, well, no, no, no. The people would have heard it before this one. You have to remember, we're doing this in the wrong order. However... True. It, this... it This... Yeah, I'm... I'm just ecstatic about this game. You're ecstatic about this one? I'm ecstatic about the other one. Yes. Yes. Well, but I have the emotional stake in this one. The other game was very, very fun. Uh, I was able, I was fortunate enough to watch most of it as I watched uh, up to like midway through the third quarter when I was at home. Then I left for IG Field and watched the rest on CFL Plus using a VPN on the way to the game. So, so good thing is... I get to watch the team, whoever it is, hoist the cup next week. So is it going to be your Bombers? Is it going to be the Alouettes? It's going to be the Bombers, baby. It's going to be the Bombers, baby. Oh, spoiler alert for who I'm taking in the Grey Cup preview. Get the fuck out of here. Um, (laughs) Overall, I got to say. Now, oh, one thing also to notice. uh, Bombers. Really, uh, really up the pyro budget for tonight. Jesus Christ. It was like, like, I thought like Cody Rhodes was coming out. Gee, like it was everywhere. <laughs> it was one of those things. I mean, the bombers, they, they, they just try to put on a bit of a show, but they definitely, uh, definitely put more of a budget. They had like four extra uh, firework shooters or whatever, um, out near the entrance where they normally have their normal sparklers and steam throwers or whatever. <laughs> And then they also had like fireworks like behind the the screens like the the, the oh yeah that's smart up. just shoot them up upwards and have the big jumbotron catch on fire no 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 ours is all plated <laughs> in steel it's not gonna catch on fire it's fine oh okay um do you have a wood jumbotron there in Hamilton <laughs> no well, I mean you never know what could catch on fire these days these days. <laughs> Apparently not the Toronto Argonauts. Um, <laughs> anyways, anyways, um, I, I think that's pretty much all I have. As I mean, I literally, I if you if you want to know a full full in depth thing uh, of all my opinions on this game, I got a thirty minute video on the Nolan Hockey Podcast going all over this game. Tons of live reactions, 21 of those. Lots and lots of good stuff. And don't forget, BC Lions were taking the exit off the highway to Sac City. Yes, yes, (laughs) Sac City. Um, Instead of Suplex City, it's Sac City. Exactly. That that was what I thought when I made it. I was like, like, although I got to say, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers... Uh, caption for their social media post was fucking ruthless. Did you see? Did you hear? Did you see this? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you it's what it's on is. their Twitter. Uh, yeah. Okay. So essentially, it's on the one where they post the the score, and it just said, okay. "Turns out you were the underdogs for a reason." <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that is ruthless. Like that is not holding back. I'm not going to lie. It was really, really tempting 
for me to name the episode instead of Sack City to Still Vanilla question mark. But oh, I don't want to like um, overuse that. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> before we end this, wasn't there something that you ha- a new nickname that you had for the BC Lions? The BC Lions. Aren't they the new? Didn't you say that the BC Lions is the Winnipeg's new whipping whipping boy? <laughs> Rick's trying to start a fight right now, and I don't appreciate it. Hey. <laughs> I said I I I I had made I had made a joke referring to the fact that the BC Lions have had a hard time against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and it was one of those things where I definitely you're just made speaking it. facts. No, no, that's true. However, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be insensitive as, uh, as I mean, I, I've, I, I've taken a lot of craps on their team. However, it's one of those things, like I said, I know, continue. <laughs> I, I, and I will continue. However, I'm going to acknowledge the fact that they got a damn good team and they still got a bright future ahead of them. They do. Um, and, and so they, they, they also have a, they also have a sister in the family too. They're called the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. <laughs> no, no, the fuck Saskatchewan. No, 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 fuck Saskatchewan. No, that's different. No, 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 no. Don't, don't compare the Lions. Do not compare the Lions to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Fuck the Riders. That's different. That's different. I don't, I don't give a damn about the Riders. I never will give a damn about the Riders. They can fail for a hundred more years, and I wouldn't care. It's fine. They've done it for a hundred years already. They can do a hundred more. Anyways, that is pretty much all I have. I will be excited uh, to watch two former Saskatchewan Rough Rider quarterbacks dish it out for a trophy that Saskatchewan's not going to hoist. And uh, I will see you guys. Uh, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you've not already. Comment down below your guys' thoughts on the video. Maybe you're really pissed at me for making jokes about the Lions uh, or about the Argonauts. I don't care. Uh, and uh, Rick has one more comment before I end the video. Yeah. Since you mentioned the two quarterbacks, don't forget their offensive coordinator too. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Jeez. God diggity damn. Look at that. Mr. Stat Boy over here has got it all figured out. You go anyway. to Saskatchewan for you go to Saskatchewan for your career to die, but then when you leave, they, they revamp your career and you come back up from the dead. <laughs> that that's gotta hurt Ryder fans, man. Jeez. Anyways, like I said though, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. Comment down below, and we'll see you see you guys next time. Touchdown!